You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. This time things will be different. Carol beat us. Uh, we want revenge. One, two, three, go! This time I made Revenge week, so we just got to come hard and take care of business on Friday. And to beat them twice within one season is a large task. You know, you got to embrace that grind. Swagger back, and now we're ready to make a run. Go we'll right off the bat and score every time we have the ball. Roll it out on the table, put out the card. Play with an urgency. If you don't play well, you're going to turn your stuff in on Monday. To quote baseball legend Yogi Berra, it's like deja vu all over again. Sectional semifinal night here on the Highlight Zone and the SAC's biggest schools ready for rematches. That includes at Dean Gorsuch Field, and that's where Andy McDonald spent his night. He joins us more with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Andy. Hey, thank you, Glenn. A long, long time ago, seemingly in a galaxy far, far away. Week two, a shocker for Snyder. Carroll beat the Panthers for the first time in program history, and the Chargers, they did it in dominating fashion by a score of 38-14. Would it be revenge? Or would it be repeat? Snyder, Carroll, it's your highlight zone game of the week. Since losing to Carroll, Snyder righted the ship. Panthers finishing the regular season 7-2, ranked 11th. Both teams coming off that class 6A by first drive for the Panthers. Snyder, Anias, Lockett, all one minute and three seconds to score that TD. The Chargers respond. Gavin Vogt to Eddie Bransfield off the play action. They missed the extra point, though. It's 7-6. Snyder, the ensuing kickoff. And when you say the ensuing kickoff, you know this is going to happen. Jay Sean Underwood for Snyder has his PF Flyers on 91 yards to the house. Then the final play of the first quarter play action, John Barnes Jr. to Simon Dellinger, one of two TDs on the day for the big Army football commit, 21-6 after one late in the first half now chargers driving vote to his favorite target camden childers childers the tiptoe on the sideline but on fourth down no lawrence johnson no austin france no problem for this snyder d they're making their own legacy vote tracked down by bam tavares scott for the panthers after the half after the play action bars to braxton mantle thing one thing two no think gronk one gronk two Four total TDs for the Snyder tight ends. The Panthers get their revenge as they advance 49-30, the final. We were prepared for this since week two. You know, we wanted some a little revenge on them, and we came out here and played well. What's it like having two big tight ends that you can throw to? It's great. It's such a blessing. Uh, I know I can rely on them to go up and get it, so I can just throw it and hit the seams, and it's a good 20 yards every time I throw it to them. Well, we've been working all week for everything. You know, we had to prepare. We had to bye week. Uh, just prepared that whole week and come in, came into the game. All prepared for everything. You play with two tight ends, that, you know, don't, defense has to balance up, and, and that's just a good weapon for us. And, and uh, John does a good job with the play actions, and, and um, you know our running game kind of feeds that part of the offense. One not so graceful celebration. As for Snyder, who will they face in the sectional title game? Glenn, back to you. Oh, Snyder getting it going at the right time of season. Another half of the 6A sectional three bracket. Homestead at Northrop, another rematch. These two met in week one. Spartans took it 45-28 third quarter. It's 17-0 Homestead, but Northrop making it interesting. Bailey Mirzo on fourth and goal to Amari on green. It's a 17-7 game after that touchdown. Right at the end of the third, though, Jake Archbold. Part of that two-headed monster at QB for Homestead. Keeps it himself. It's a good decision from the junior. He is in. That makes it 24-7 Homestead. Now in the fourth quarter, every time Northrop had momentum in this one, the Sparty D comes up big. Mark Daly. Daly, excuse me, recovers the fumble and then... It's Braden Melkai with the pick right here. And Homestead sets up a rematch with Snyder. Your final in this one, 24 to 7. It's revenge time. I mean, ever, ever since I, I can remember, nobody's, nobody, no Homestead team is, has put a whooping on Snyder. And, and that's always our goal every time we play him. And, and I think it's time for Homestead to get some revenge and earn some respect. They're the kind of the measuring stick uh, in the area, you know. So we get to measure ourselves and see where we're at. And we feel like we've improved since we played them the first time. And they've improved since then. So I think it's going to be an awesome game. Yeah, next week, sectional title game in 6A. Snyder at Homestead will be all over that one.
Staying in 6A, Warsaw ranked 12th in the state, but a tough task for Coach Bart Curtis and company. The 7-2 Tigers at 9th ranked Penn. The Kingsmen always good. They move the football down the field in the first quarter, and they get on the board thanks to Ryan Majerek, a 27-yard field goal to make it 3-zip Penn. Second quarter, though, first touchdown of the game goes to Warsaw. Josh West to Luke Adamayek. 68-yard touchdown here. Warsaw stakes itself to a 7-3 lead, but second half belonged to Penn. Penn wins it 16-7. Warsaw finishes 7-3 in Coach Curtis's first season. Oh, with Northside losing last week, only one local team left in 5A. Huntington North making the a long drive to West Lafayette to face Harrison. We picked this one up with second quarter action. Andrew Jensen to Jay Smith. That was right in your living room. It's a touchdown, and the Raiders up 33-6. to Brett Kaler trying to make something happen for Huntington North. He is sacked there by Jacob Schmidt. Not a great night for the Vikings. Their season comes to an end. They finish 4-6 and six on the year. That's four more wins than last year, though. You're final on this one, 54-20. to 20. Let's talk some 4A football. Zollner Stadium double book tonight, so Bishop Dwenger hosting Leo at Lures Field. 21 zip Saints at the half. Third quarter, how about some Dwenger D? They've been doing it all season. Why not tonight? T.J. Tittman making the play in the defensive backfield. The third one. And you're going to see on the ensuing drive, Hayden Ellinger bounces his way outside for a 31-yard touchdown. Bishop Dwenger up 28-0 at that point. Picture perfect game so far for the Saints. Here, it's Callan Stauffer causing the fumble. Travis Tittman, he recovers for the Saints, and they were in great field position. And the very next play, Brendan Lytle to Patrick O'Keefe. We can't get you any closer to the action than that. It's a touchdown as Dwenger wins going away. 42-9 over the Leo Lions. So, who will Dwenger get in the sectional title game? Wayne or New Haven? First quarter, Wayne trying to make something happen offensively. Devin Air Kelso's got plenty of moves, unfortunately. A little wet out there tonight. Ball pops out. Who's Johnny on the spot? Caleb Spencer in New Haven. He has a nice return here, but... New Haven would be able, unable, I should say, to convert some points on that drive. Brandon Young, Cameron Chambers and Chambers, nobody within 20 yards of him. We're talking wide open, 60-yard touchdown for Wayne. Six zip, Generals in the lead, still in the first. Kelso, making up for that early fumble. He's talented, throw up the five kid as Wayne up 12-0 and the Generals go on to roll 53-14. So we've got Dwenger and Wayne at Wayne next week for a sectional championship. That will be your Highlight Zone game of the week. For a sectional 19, Angola undefeated this year. The Hornets ranked fifth tonight. They were hosting Northridge. Raiders five and five coming in. 21 zip Angola at the half third quarter. Northridge, Zach Howie making plays in the defensive or the offensive backfield. That's a tackle for loss for the Raiders, but Angola recovers. Antonio Lurvano, Lurvanos, Luvanos. Spell check is, is, is tricky. First down there for Angola led to this. Eric Cockroft with a 35 yard field goal. Angola up 24 0. Later in the third, oh man, he had a big game against Culver last week. Marcus Tagliaferri with a tackle for loss. Early fourth quarter, Cockroft boots another one in, and Angola. Still undefeated on the season. They win this one 34 zip over Northridge. In Kendallville, East Noble with its work cut out. The Northeast 8 champs hosting top ranked Northwood. This would be a ball game, folks. Northwood's Bronson Yoder in the first quarter. Hands it off to Ben Mestash. He's in for the touchdown. Northwood up six zip after the failed two point conversion attempt. Bronson Yoder up the middle here. Shakes off a couple tackles and he scores. Northwood now on top by a, by a score of 14 to 0. East Noble's offense starts to get humming here. Bailey Parker looking. Bailey Parker finding Gage Ernstberger. And Ernstberger, that's a touchdown. Cuts Northwood lead in half to 14 7. But in the second quarter, Northwood doing it again on the ground. They've done it like this all year. Northwood leads 20 to 7 on the Yoder touchdown. And Northwood knocks out East Noble 46 to 35. That sets up. Northwood against Angola next week in Angola for a 4A sectional 19 championship. Well, that does it for the bigger schools in the area, but some of the biggest games came from small schools tonight. In 1A, we're talking four, uh, one, number four, Busco, 
at number two, Adams Central, one of the top games in the state at Minnick Field. 2A Central Noble tries to knock off 11th ranked Bremen. And in 3A, number 10 Bishop Lures travels to a good 8-2 West Noble team. All that and much, much more up next in the zone. Well, we were going to hear from Fremont coach Jim Hummer, but you can hear more from him at 6 o'clock on Wednesday in our Highlight Zone 2-Minute Drill. We're going to check in on uh, Fremont versus Southwood in just a sec. But on the other half of the 1A sectional 43 bracket, it was one of the top matchups in the entire state. Second ranked, Adam Central hosting fourth ranked Busco. The Jets undefeated on the season. The Eagles just beat number six South Adams last week. Third quarter, though. Busco making it a ball game. That's Sam Wood with the touchdown. It was a 21-10 Adam Central lead, but AC starts to pull away from there. Parker Bates, a little trickery, finds Chase Peterson, and Peterson is gone. He finds Pater, Adam Central, now up 28-10. Later in the third, how about a short yardage specialist? Jalen Hammond's been doing it all year. He's in for the touchdown, and Adam Central romps over Busco. The Jets 11-0 now. They win 35-10. Uh, it's a huge win. We knew coming into the game that uh, Busco was going to be a really good team. It was probably the best team that we've played so far. They played us tough the whole entire game. We just came out at halftime, made some adjustments, made big plays the whole night, and it got us the win. For us to come out here and, and get a win, and hopefully this is going to get us some momentum uh, for next week, we hope. So who will AC get in the sectional title game next week? Third-ranked Southwood at Fremont. First quarter action, Southwood's D stacking them up. This is Braden Barney with a tackle for loss, and we are knotted at nil-nil. Later in the first, Fremont says turnabout is indeed fair play. Watch this. The entire Fremont defense essentially in that offensive backfield. A sack there for Fremont, but Southwood starts to get it going after that. Gabe Lloyd takes the handoff here, and from one yard out, Lloyd in for the touchdown. Southwood up 7-0, second quarter. They go to the air, do the Knights. Alex Farr rolling, finding Dawson Phillips. That's a 13-yard strike. Southwood up 14 zip. The Knights go on to win 37-6. So we've got second-ranked AC hosting number three Southwood next week down in Monroe. Should be a good one. Jumping up to two-way, Everett Johnson breaking Bluffton's single-season rushing record last week. Tonight, he was leading the Tigers against Prairie Heights. And in the first quarter, who else but Everett Johnson in to make it 6-0 Bluffton. How about some Bluffton defense? Corbin Fry, part of a big gang tackle there in the backfield. And then in the second quarter, it's the Bluffton offense heating up and getting going in the form of Everett Johnson. He came in with over 1,700 yards on the season. Top 10 in the state coming in in rushing yards this year. That's a touchdown as Bluffton goes on to eliminate Prairie Heights in this one by a final of 41 to eight. As for who Bluffton will face in the next round for a sectional championship, we got 11th ranked Freeman, eight and two coming in, Central Noble seven and three. Second quarter, that's Justin Zumbrun right before the half to give Bremen a 29 to seven lead. Third quarter, Nick Rawls picking up a first down on the ground for the Cougars. And then unfortunately for the Cougs, Jacob Bros fumbles, it's recovered by Zumbrun and the Lions in business. You can't give a team as good as Bremen opportunities. Jacob Wonder in for the short touchdown and Bremen knocks out Central Noble 52 to 19. So next week, Bremen will travel to Bluffton for a sectional championship showdown. In 3A, 10th ranked Lures at West Noble. The Chargers impressive at eight and two this season. Would they have what it takes to beat the Knights at their home field? Well, Norman Kanaki early on, feeling that West Noble defense. That's Jace Dooley with the interception for West Noble, but West Noble gives it back. They fumble there and the Knights recover. We're still 0-0. Second quarter, special teams. Very special tonight for Lures. That's Jordan Presley. The senior on a punt return for a touchdown to make it 7-zip. Later in the second quarter, another punt and another return for a touchdown. Not Presley, but Justin Gaston. Gaston all the way in for the score as Lures beats West Noble up in Ligonier 45-21. So who will Lures get in the sectional title game? Concordia or Belmont? Well, Concordia's first drive 
It looked like the cadets on paper. You'd think it was the cadets, right? Jake Bird finds Kamari Anderson Drew, the senior, in your living room for a touchdown to make it 7 zip to Manigal feeling good. Belmont, though, methodically driving down the field, capping off a drive with a short touchdown from Jonathan Wilder. That knots it at 7 7. Second quarter, the Braves' defense, after they recovered a fumble, the offense goes to the air. Noah Macklin. Great catch and picks up about 50 yards on the play. That drive ends with Colin Mills in the end zone and Belmont pulls off a shocker at Zollner Stadium tonight. Belmont wins 28 to 21. Both their wins this season have come in the playoffs. They will host Lewis next week for a sectional title. That does it for football. We got Canterbury playing for a state championship in soccer coming up next. You can't see us, but we can see you. Stay tuned for more on the Highlight Zone. Stay tuned, yeah! yeah! We are the Canterbury Cavaliers, and we made the trip to Indy, and so did the Highlight Zone. Well, seven is considered by many to be a lucky number, right? Well, for Canterbury, a little luck tonight wouldn't hurt. Canterbury Boys Soccer playing in the 1A state title match. A win, and they'd have seven state titles in the program's trophy case. The Cavs would be facing Covenant Christian tonight down in Indianapolis. Things getting rolling at 6 o'clock. A rematch of last year's title match. It's all the Cavs win 2-1. to one. They scored with four minutes to go to win that one. So these teams pretty even. Canterbury's Clayton Perry in the first half with the save. The game would be scoreless at the half. Second half. Kind of the same deal. Canterbury with an opportunity here. The header looks like it's going in, but Covenant Christian, great save right there. We're scoreless after regulation. Then we're scoreless after overtime. So we go to penalty kicks. Covenant Christian, they're good. They convert all five of their PKs, but Canterbury pretty good too. They convert all five of their PKs. So what do we do? We go to sudden death PKs. The pressure is on. Covenant Christian. They get to kick first. First sudden death PK, and it is oh, over the crossbar. That opens the door for Canterbury. They can win it with the make. Joel Groninger, ice water in his veins. The junior drills it. Are you kidding me? And that is how Canterbury wins a state championship. Sudden death PKs. We're talking back-to-back -back state titles for the Cavs. Their seventh state championship in their storied program history. It's unreal, honestly. I don't, I don't think, I don't know. It's pretty crazy, you know? It means a lot. I mean, last year, I didn't really get to play much, and this year I'm playing, and we won the state, so it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. It's incredible. I don't think anyone thought that we were going to win this. I, it's, it's truly special. I mean, to represent our whole entire city is something pretty special. You know, not everyone gets to do that. And uh, to win state is pretty incredible. So we got to do that for our city. To come together and replace 15 guys off a roster, they, they really worked to become the best team they could be, and they never gave up. We had some dark days, but they kept with it all the way. Yeah, as Coach Mock said there, almost a totally different roster from last year's state championship team. Tip of the cap to the Cavs. Meanwhile, Homestead girls, they'll play for the 3A state title tomorrow. They face Carmel at 6 o'clock. We're going to be down there for that match as well to see a preview with the Spartans. Click on the Wayne.com sports page. Hey, final stop of action. We're talking Comets Hockey. Kays at home against the rival Toledo Walleye. Second period, no score. Shane Birchbach changes that. It's a power play goal for the Fish. The Walleye take a lead. They score four goals in the second period, does Toledo. A long night for the Comets. They lose this one 7-3. to three. These two teams will play again tomorrow, but that game is back in Toledo. Puck drops at 7-15 over in Ohio. Well, it's that time of the show where we honor the best. And you know what? We had a lot of great football plays tonight, didn't we? Yeah, but you know, only one play that we had on this show won a state championship, and that is Joel Groninger from Canterbury. Sudden death PKs. You remember, Covenant Christian missed their first attempt on sudden death PKs, and Canterbury's Groninger drills it. The kid's a junior, and he helped Canterbury bring home that seventh state title. Congratulations to Joel and the Cavaliers. That is your Highlight Zone Play of the Week. Next week, here's what some of the sectional games look like, some of the key games in 6A. It's a rematch of the regular season. Snyder at Homestead in 4A. Both teams undefeated. Northwood at Angola. Both teams 11-0. 
Dwenger at Wayne. You remember Dwenger won 22 to zero against the Generals in week one in a monsoon. Lures is at Belmont. The Braves with a shocker and Southwood at Adams Central. Only one loss between uh, no losses really between those two teams. Should be very good. We'll have a cover for you next week in the sectional championship version of the Highlight Zone.